Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'll be, you know, sharing you the status of renewable energy and what we've done in, you know, the post-reconstruction activities in terms of energy interventions. Right? Uh, you can see my, you know, outline of the presentation. Basically, I'll be very brief in introducing the energy situations, energy consumption pattern, energy access. Uh, what are the possibilities for renewable energy, right? Renewable energy potential resources. And then I'll introduce my organizations. What we're doing, what is the scope, what, uh, how are we going to actually implement the program. Uh, also a national program called National Rural and Renewable Energy Program. I'll be very brief in introducing this program. Contribution of renewable energy in total energy elements. Uh, the, the government sector priority in the sector. Uh, early intervention, renewable energy intervention in post earthquake reconstruction. Possible contribution in you know, of like housing, basically housing resources. What are the challenges and how do we actually uh, move forward? Uh, this slide is to show you, you know, our you know, brief information of our country. We have 147,000 square kilometer area. The country is divided into three ecological you know, regions, Tarai, Hills and Mountains, about 27 million populations. And then, in terms of households, 5.6 million households uh, Key features of the energy sector. This is uh, rather important. We heavily rely on traditional fuels. Uh, regular power plants. Uh, fortunately, these days we do not experience you know, power plants, but in the past we used to experience you know, every day of about 12, 13 hours of you know, power plants. 100% petroleum is important, uh, but because of, you know, we, we rely on rely, you know, basically uh, in India. So if something goes wrong in the border, then <laughs> there is always a problem. But we have, you know, very good suspects of renewable energy. Uh, if you see the, the energy situation, you know, in terms of cooking and lighting, right? So energy consumption by fuel type is, uh, you know, 77% of the total energy comes from traditional fuel, right? Traditional fuel, basically, uh, the, you know, the firewood, agricultural residue, animal dung, all those things. The renewable contributes about 3%, uh, whereas commercial is about 20%. You know, that also shows you, it should have been in commercial, you know, if our consumption, you know, increases from, uh, you know, traditional to commercial, that will actually, you know, indicate that our development. Uh, in terms of uh, and all those, mostly 80% of our energy goes in the residential sector. Uh, we are agro-based economy, but in the agriculture sector, uh, you know, you know, about 1% energy is being consumed. The transport also, transport sector also about 7%. Industrial, you know, consumption is very less, about 8%. So that also shows, you know, uh, energy poverty. We are, you know energy poor. Uh, in terms of access, access both for lighting as well as cooking. In terms of cooking, as I was mentioning you know, before also, we heavily rely on traditional fuels. In terms of cooking, almost 64-65% of the energy, you know, uh, I mean, the cooking uh, comes from firewood. You know? uh, electricity, very less. LPG contributes around 21%. Whereas in lighting, you know, 67% uh, households are 67% uh, you know households uh, you know have electricity for their lights whereas kerosene contributes around 18% uh, solar 7% right and others close to you know 7% this is the scenario in terms of potential, uh, we are rich in hydro resources. 83,000. This this was you know kind of you know um, uh, based on uh, one study, one um, PhD thesis, but this is being now updated. So this this figure, you know, people say you know this figure goes very high. Uh, you know, 43,000, 42,000 is technically feasible in terms of hydro, whereas solar. We have very good, uh, you know, solar resources. We get uh, per meter square per day, 
and close to five unit uh, energy. Wind also got uh, very good wind resources, 10,000 megawatt. Uh, in terms of biomass and bio, uh, you know, bio gas, you know, close to two million households, they can have biogas. Biofuel also, you know, the improved cooking stoves in the rural areas quite possible. If you see the, you know, development trend, you know, um, renewable energy interventions was initiated in the 60s. Uh, this was actually uh, with the inputs, supports from, you know, Swiss government. And then we have an agriculture development bank implementing few, you know, research projects. From 90, actual, actually implementation started. And then we've got a policy, you know, institutional mechanism, all those things was in, initiated in, you know, early, um, you know, late 90s. Uh, but actual, you know, momentum uh, has been actually um, initiated in 2010. The whole idea was to upscale energy interventions. Uh, we public-private partners model in service delivery. We actually wanted to link energy with the productive use and, you know, livelihood. Uh, we also a few, you know, policy instruments like, you know, um, renewable energy, rural energy policy, hydropower policy, forest act, all those things is, uh, was initiated in, late, uh, in, in the you know, beginning of the 2000s. My organization, Alternative Energy Promotion Center, was established in, 2000, in, in 1996. We are the focal agency for promotion and development of renewable energy technologies. We've got semi-autonomous status. The board is represented by public sector, private sector, and financial sector. Uh, we are the national executive agency for renewable energy program and projects. Actually, we help government in uh, supporting and preparing plan and policy. Uh, program implementations, quality assurance, and all those kind of things. Uh, you know, our interventions in, in small hydro, solar, biogas, and cooking stoves. We follow public private partnership model. You know, private public sector's role is to create demand, right? Uh, is to prepare policy related document, whereas private sectors are the one to actually uh, implement projects. You know, users. It gets benefit from both private sector and public sector. This is how we actually implement. Uh, there are few policy documents, rural energy policy, renewable energy subsidy policy, the delivery mechanisms, uh, duty and track exemptions, guidelines, all those things are um, established, uh, approved by the government in renewable energy sectors. Uh, this slide is to show you, you know, uh, again, this is just to you know, show you the trend. Uh, we initiated, uh, um, you know, energy sector assistance program in 1999. Then biogas, renewable energy projects, and all those projects with different donors. And our intervention area in hydropower, solar, biogas, you know, productive end use, institutional water mill, carbon and climate, those things. Now I don't see USAID there. No, no, we do not have strange. USAID. That's a strength. But now we are with USAID, not with USAID, but actually with MCC, Millennium Challenge Cooperations. Right? Yeah, MCC, yeah, you know, we are in contact with them. So hopefully we'll be implementing few projects based on innovative business idea. So this has been started very recently, but uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we don't have partnership with USAID. That was not very good. See? Uh, these are our actually existing partners. We've got Danish, Norwegians, GFID, German, SNV, UN Systems, ADB, and World Bank. Unfortunately, not USAID. So this is a kind of, you know, five years program. We have three, uh, you know, major components. The Central Renewable Energy Fund for subsidy and credit, the technical component, and productive end use and business development. Our coverage, we actually are everywhere in Nepal, from the west to east. Right? We operate through our regional, nine regional service centers, three national, uh, you know, national service providers, 75 districts, uh, you know, 61 district level service centers. So we are actually everywhere. Uh, what we have contributed in, the, in, 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 in Nepal? You know, 15% uh, you know, of the populations have got access to electricity from renewable energy. Uh, as you can see, 26 megawatt from hydro, 700,000 from solar, 2,300 from institutions solar. Uh, three, three, 350,000 households have got 
biogas plant. Basically, they replace firewood for cooking. Um, you know, we have got around 1.2 million households have got improved cooked stoves. They replace, they reduce actually, you know, fuel consumptions by 30 to 50 percent. More than 1,200 small and medium enterprises have been established in the sector. You know, every year, uh, 500 jobs. So over the last, you know, 20 years, actually, um, this uh, close to 30,000 jobs have been created. Uh, renewable energy helps improve health, education, sanitation, so those things. Uh, you know, at the mac macro level, we've got policy, we've got institutional mechanism, basically for providing subsidy and credit. So we've got testing authority for you know quality assurance. Uh, we have you know strong private sector basically you know competent private sector in solar in hydro in biogas in cook stoves uh, uh, external develop, development partners are supporting you know renewable energy through APC we also have you know the the few projects registered under you know clean development mechanisms uh, we've been actually recognized by uh, external development partners as well as uh, Nepali authority that APC is is one of the key players in promoting renewable energy sectors. Governments, uh, you know, priority is also very high. <coughs> uh, during the energy crisis, every household in Nepal will be made indoor air pollution free, you know, with clean cooking and lighting solutions, very high, you know, targets in periodic plan. Uh, we've joined, the Nepal government has joined sustainable energy for all initiatives. So we are basically responsible for energy access. There are three thematic areas, energy access, renewable energy, and energy efficiency. Um, the sustainable development goal, goal number seven contributes, you know, we are linked with the SDG seven. Uh, we've signed a federal agreement for energy plus. Uh, you know, government also uh, ha has actually, you know, announced that we'll be graduating from 2022. So energy is one of the top priority for the government. So two, one and a half years ago, in this big disaster, actually, you know, earthquake uh, has damaged not only you know other sector but also in renewable energy sector. Even though these are our interventions are you know all across Nepal, but 14 districts you know they uh, were most uh, affected. Off grid electricity, we have micro hydro, solar, and institutes. 262 small hydro projects, micro hydro projects were damaged. 115,000 solar home systems. Basically, these are household-based systems. So, from those, you know, 14 districts, 156 institutional systems. Institutional systems meaning, you know, solar systems at schools, health posts, community systems. These systems, if I just, you know, uh, quantify them, in, them in monitoring terms, 43 million, you know, uh, damage was occurred. And uh, in terms of loss, very less, 0.4 million uh, the, the total cost of recovery you know uh, in off-grid electricity off-grid sector is 44 million uh, under environment and forestry uh, improved cook stoves and biogas under 46,000 by improved cook stoves and 16,000 biogas plants have been damaged uh, 15 million you know damage if I just uh, quantify those things uh, so the total total damage total loss Total cost of damage and loss for this sector is uh, close to 60 million US dollars. This was reported in the post disaster need assessment report also. So, this was uh, the, the status. And then, what we did actually, you know, immediately after earthquake, we distributed because people needed uh, lights, people needed to charge their mobile, and there was no, you know, electricity in rural areas. So we actually immediately intervened in those areas. And then 100, close to 160,000 solar home systems, small systems were distributed. 220 numbers of institutional systems um, are in different stages of you know, installations. <coughs> so, and this year also we'll be distributing 25,000. So damage assessment of 156 out of 250, 262 hydropower projects, we actually did a detailed assessment of 156 projects. Uh, out of which, you know, realities and work for 103 projects are in progress. Realities means we uh, have started, uh, you know, repairing those. Uh, out of 700, um, uh, 750,000 biogas plants in 14 of the affected districts, 
the rapid assessment has shown that 33 plants need repair. 30,000 30, plants need repair. Currently, we are actually um, rehabilitating of about uh, you know 10,000 plants. A total of 48,500 uh, um, 48, improved stoves have been uh, installed, and these are also in the affected areas, 14 districts. So what we could actually contribute? You know, we uh, have, you know, in the, we are in discussion with National Reconstruction Authority. In the regulations, they have actually made, made mandatory provision of providing clean lights and, uh, you know, very good uh, sanitation facility. So these two are linked. One, you know, every household must have, you know, solar systems. There is a range also, at least 10 watt fixed systems. Biogas improved cook stoves or sanitation facility has to be there uh, to be eligible for the grant. This 300,000 grant will be provided once you've got solar systems, you've got, you know, biogas. So this is the preconditions. You know, in the past, you know, um, this, this amendment has been very recently made. So uh, to get to be eligible for 300,000, you must have those systems. So this is one. Uh, but uh, in the in the urban area, in other area also, because of crisis, the government has uh, made mandatory provision of solar to generate 25 percent of its energy requirement has to come from solar. This is also, and then in the um, uh, you know solar for private house having roof area larger than 2,500 square feet, institutional and commercial building. This is this is basically in urban areas also. We wanted to promote rooftop solar, we wanted to promote urban solar, and then last year government decided this. Uh, fortunately, we do not have, you know, the power, power cut these days, but still, uh, if India, you know, just simply blocks their, you know, uh, in blocks uh, uh, to, sub, you know, supply electricity or other, other fuels, then we need to find, we need to find out. So for that also, you know, the government is, uh, you know, considering this. So access to efficient lighting and clean cooking. Solution will be priority for APC in the new housing and human settlements. So clean cooking and lighting for all is a government, you know, core, uh, you know, uh, priority area. But at the same time, in the earthquake, uh, you know, affected areas also, this is a mandatory problem. So operation and maintenance service center, technicians are more focused on our regions. So, so that's why, you know, in the rural areas, what we needed to do is to establish rural energy service centers, and then we need to train them. So that if something goes wrong in the rural area, people do not need to come to government or uh, the urban area. So that also, you know, we we'll discuss this with uh, National Reconstruction Authority and uh, technical, you know, vocational institute. So we will provide more training to you know rural people who can actually contribute to energy systems for housing reconstructions. Basically, you know, for house wiring, you know, electrical wiring, and all those things, we need to provide training. And for that, APC is in discussion with a concerned authority, so that because we have kind of an expertise, we could actually support them. Uh, everybody has realized that you know energy access has to be linked with economic opportunity. So we will, you know, establish, help establish uh, enterprise, micro-enterprise, electricity-based or energy-based enterprise in rural area. This is, this is our, actually, plan. Uh, you know, so, but, but uh, to do these kind of things also, there are barriers like the market, you know, restricted areas of R&D interventions. The cost is a bit high for the uh, energy, so you need either you need to subsidize or reduce the cost. That's why we are in actually partnership with academic institutes like Center for Energy Studies, the Kathmandu University. So how we can actually reduce cost? Uh, the um, regulatory framework, okay? because we deal with renewable energy. There are other players also are involved in renewable energy. So the coordination or the you know macro level kind of you know. Mm, Important is also one of the issues. Lack of standards, but the technical standards, codes and certifications. Uh, socio cultural and political, you know, situation, especially in rural areas. These uh, are also so. What needs to be done? Uh, you know, uh, we needed to upscale 
our interventions in terms of capacity, in terms of coverage, and in terms of you know penetration also. So this is uh, one of the area where we actually need to um, um, intervene. Uh, rural to urban transitions to reduce border national grid. You know our national grid is heavily you know dependent on only one type of source that is hydropower, that is hydroelectricity. Now if something goes wrong, for example, you know luckily we didn't have. I experienced that you know our major hydropower plants were um, operational even during the earthquake. If something you know happened, bad happened there, then in that case you know the country as well as the capital city would have been very difficult situation. So we needed, for example, distributed generations, meaning solar, wind, or another uh, you know different type of system, so that if one system fails, then you could actually you know get electricity from. Other sources. That's why the the energy mix is not the only the hydro, but uh, you know it has to be hydro definitely because we are hydro based uh, you know country. But we need solar, we need wind, we need bar based uh, you know um, electricity generations, and of course we also need you know enough, uh, petroleum fossil fuel. Uh, improve regulatory environment basically you know to coordinate energy in interventions you know, at the macro level. Uh, fiscal incentives, definitely credit facilities, tax, provision of rebates, uh, conducive environment for large scale renewable energy. You know, we do not have um, the renewable portfolio, we do not have feed in tariff, we do not have, you know, the green uh, leveling, energy wheeling, all those things, even though these are kind of, you know, topic for uh, discussion at the macro level also, but we are in that direction, but we have not yet, you know, established. And since the country is uh, being federated, you know, hopefully we'll have seven kind of you know, provincial office, but uh, we also needed to uh, reorganize our side. So this is also our, you know, immediate plan. <coughs> yeah, these are a few, you know, <coughs> actually photographs. Otherwise, if there are any questions, uh, I'm happy to respond. Uh, you know, I can be contacted at this email address. Thank you. 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 Right. Building roof or yeah, open space. Open. Basically, this is open space, right? Uh, inside you cannot generate solar energy, but outside, if you have a boundary, and then uh, at least if the, your space available space is uh, bigger than or more than larger than uh, 2,500 square feet, then at least 25 percent energy has to be generated from your from your you know areas. Does, does this uh, include uh, this open space outside the building, my premises? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Garden area also. But it has to be properly studied because if there is shade, huh, so that you cannot generate, you cannot uh, generate uh, enough energy. But ideal situation is of course your roof, yeah. but. If you have, you know, enough space, uh, so that is also allowed. No, allowed mandatory. mandatory. Yes, yes, yes. Any other questions? If you just see the, the municipalities bylaws, that you'll find it. Mm -hmm. Are these a requirement for new construction? New construction. So this is not old construction? No, no. So new they, construction, yeah. is, is this, I, I'm not sure I understand. 2,500 square feet, is that the rooftop area? Or That's what she was just asking. I mean, yeah, basically, I didn't, I didn't ideally, the no, no, ideally, yes, rooftop. But if you have, you know, uh, enough area outside of your roof or building, you will be eligible to, you know, install the systems. But you need to prove that you know, 25% energy is coming from your area, your land. Oh, excuse me. This is mandatory for the entire nation, uh, near construction? No, no. This is basically for the urban area. For urban area. This is urban area. Municipality. For the new construction. 
this was initiated last year last year. right last year uh, but because of energy crisis that was the kind of you know uh, push but um, but this will be continued i guess thank you very much yes <laughs> for being here okay well i've got a i've got a question for you sure sure